searching, searching. And he's trying to find, his question is, what is the matrix? He senses an unreality in the world. And he can't possibly find the answer because all of the searches are happening within the matrix. It'd be like trying to escape the internet, but you're always online. Like, let me try to find a website that's not on the internet. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's why the search doesn't work. But when he finally meets Morpheus, he says, Morpheus, Morph Morpheus says, you've been looking for me for a long time. I've been looking for you your whole life. And it's, how did Morpheus find him? It was because he was searching. Morpheus noticed the search and then found him. So that's the paradox. You can't find it by searching, but without searching, you will never find it. Often, the experience, and it could be a personal thing or it could be a social thing. Either way, you have the sense that this isn't something far away. It's not something that takes a lot of work to get to. And, uh, it's always just right there, like closer than close. For example, if you're by the bedside of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a dying loved one, and in those moments you understand like what is precious in life and how precious this each each precious moment is with that person. And you think, how could I have not, not cherished this when I had so many moments? And there's that, that feeling of, of like there's this thickness in the air. That potential exists all the time. Or if you feel a moment of intense connection to nature, like nature's there all the time. There's a, a saying in uh, Chinese Buddhism. It means as far away as the horizon and right in front of your face. No matter how fast and how far you run, it's as far away as when you began. You can't get any closer. But it's also right there when you stop running. So this experience of, of, of a glimpse, this it's it's just, it's the, the feeling is, ah, I always knew it. I knew it was there, and now I've finally been shown it. It can happen a couple times. It's like you get picked up and you get flown there. But each time you end up, you don't stay there. When you're there, you might think, oh, this will last forever. I now understand reality. I now understand life. I'm enlightened now. And you are enlightened now, but it's not, enlightenment's not like flicking on a switch and it stays on forever. You find yourself at some point, the acid trip is over, the, the person is buried, quote, real life begins to approach again, and you find yourself pretty much back where you started. And you might want to, in some circumstances, you might try to repeat the experience. Well, I've got to get out into nature more. And you go out into nature, but you don't really quite have that moment again. So, you realize then that you cannot count on being plucked up and flown there and put in this new place, in this place that you always knew existed, and now you've seen it. Um, socially, too, you might have similar experiences, like at, at Burning Man, you know, or at a, at a, at a concert, or, or uh, building something with people, or creating art with people, or creating music with people, or some, some kind of bonding experience where it's like, ah, this is what relationship is supposed to be. This is how human beings are supposed to interact with each other. I knew it. 
I knew it wasn't supposed to be this way. I knew it wasn't supposed to be the way that, was, that I've been told it's normal. I knew that cooperation can come effortlessly and that, and that we can almost read each other's minds or we can read each other's minds and, and coordinate our gifts. And I knew, I knew it. Like we experienced that sometimes, I've experienced it. And that's another version of the glimpse. I'm oversimplifying things. I mean, you can have, in one area of life, you can have this, be in one part of the invisible path and another part of life be in another part. Um, so, okay. So when the glimpse is over and you come back to where you started, you're actually in a very different place than where you started because whereas in the earlier stages, you knew something existed, but you didn't know what it was, and therefore you had no way of, of directing your actions and your choices. Now, not only do you know that something exists, but you also know what it is. And so the experience of life is very different. Now, it's not I've got to find it. Now is I've got to get back there. And you understand that you cannot rely on being flown back, that there's a lot of territory in between here and there that needs to be traversed. That the things that are, that are preventing, preventing you from staying at that beautiful place are, are things inside of you that need to be healed and cleared. Habits, uh, ways of thinking, old wounds, um, fears, hang-ups, all kinds of stuff, all the, all the baggage that we have. You realize that, that this is a kind of a terrain that has to be walked across in order to arrive at this beautiful place that you were taken to by grace, taken to from beyond your own power. And now I'm just gonna have to walk to this place where I was flown to. And so this is stage six. And this is the, the stage I call the invisible path. And it kind of contains all the other stages. So you begin walking. to this new place, to this new world. And the, the ways that we use in the old world to get where we want it don't work anymore. For example, um, risk minimization. Well, what if this and what if that? And what's the practical thing? And that, that doesn't help find the invisible path. Um, we have to use different eyes to see the markings of the, of the invisible path. For example, um, what makes your heart sink? What feels right, regardless of reasons? What Well, it's, 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 it's feelings that, that, that guide us. And a lot of the feelings and sensitivities have never been exercised, and so we're, they're, they're, we're, they're very unfamiliar to us, and we have to learn. And often the only way to learn is to make mistakes and find that we've walked into a swamp or a dead end, and we have to turn around and come back. So it's like there's this beacon, this place, this, this glorious light radiating place that we've been to before. And now we're back here, but we see it there. And we have to walk there, and there's all kinds of swamps in between. Sometimes you go down a hill, and you can't see the beacon anymore. And then sometimes you ascend to a, to, uh, a peak, and there it is again. Yeah, that's right, I remember. There it is. So sometimes you might even, might even revisit some of the earlier stages of the path. And often we'll bump up against other people who are also walking the invisible path, especially that happens in these, in these dark valleys. And we have a conversation that is usually not in these words, but the essence of it is, you've been there too, so have I. I saw it too, you're not crazy. I'm 
going to the same place you are. I recognize that place. And I found that that in in key moments I've had I've had this kind of interaction that helps me remember where I'm going. It's a place that well, there's also parts of the path that um, you have to go through yourself that are very solitary and that nobody can help you. And there are other parts where, I mean, yeah, there's some tight passages that one person and only one person can go through at a time. And then there are other parts that you can't get through yourself. No matter how enlightened you are, no matter how much work on yourself you've done, no matter how much you've meditated, no matter what books you've read, you absolutely can't do it yourself. It's, there are places where you can only do it holding hands with other people. And so we're just learning this territory because uh, our generation is among the first. Culturally, collectively, the glimpse happened in the 1960s. The hippies got it. They saw a new world. They were absolutely sure. Woodstock. 